In this example, we're going to create a CMake from scratch. I've, I'm in some directory that I'm going to create a project in, so let's go ahead and make a directory called hello CMake. And in this directory, I don't have anything, but I need to create a few files. So the first is I'm going to make a directory where I'm going to keep my source. And the next is I'm going to create a file, cmakelists.txt, which is a magical name for this kind of a file. So CMake requires you to have a file that tells it how to make make files or Xcode files or Eclipse files or whatever. We're going to design our project and the files that it contains based on this file. So first of all, let's go ahead into my source directory. And I'm going to go ahead in this directory and include another file that's going to tell me about how to make all of these files. So in addition to cmakelists.txt, I need to create a root project or a, a root file to contain all of my C code. So I'm going to call this main.c. And now let's go ahead and edit main.c. So I'm going to use vi because it's a convenient editor that stays inside of this window. You guys can use whatever text editor you want to. So I'm going to use standard io.h in main. I don't need any inputs to this particular main function. All I'm going to do is say printf hello cmake new line return zero so now I've created main.c so I could compile main.c now using GCC and make an executable but then I would only be able to compile it with GCC so I'm going to use cmake to turn main.c into an executable. So I'm going to now edit cmakelists.txt. And in here, I'm going to make an executable. And the execute, executable is going to be called hello cmake. And it's going to be made up of main.c. So this is sort of like the world's easiest cmake lists. And below, so now I'm in this directory called source. In order to make something a little bit more interesting now, I'm going to edit this cmakelists.txt here. And there's a couple of things that I sort of need to do to make errors go away, but I'm going to leave those out now, or warnings go away, but I'm going to leave those out for now. Instead, I'm going to say add subdirectory, which is a magical keyword in CMake that says that I want the source directory to be included in this project. Is it add project? Maybe it's just project. Yeah, project. And I'm going to call this project um, hello CMake. Okay, so I've sort of done all of this just from memory. Uh, but now I have a few files. So let's do a listing of all the files that we have. So in the directory where we are now, we have cmakelists.txt, and then we also have a source directory. And in that source directory, we have another cmakelists, and we have a file called main.c. So now I'm going to try to build this system. So I'm going to make a new directory called a build directory. So the reason that I do this is that I want to keep the build files separate from the source files. And you'll see why when we do the example on how to submit your homeworks. So now let's go into the build directory and I'm going to execute CMake. So if you don't know where CMake is on your system, you can type which CMake and my CMake is located in user bin. And the CMake version that I'm running is version 3.0. I'm pretty sure the version that's on ECE3 is uh, version 2.6. So in any case, I'm going to invoke CMake and I need to tell CMake where the CMake lists is. So if I just type CMake, it gives me a whole bunch of information, none of which really helps at the bottom. The real information is that I need to tell where is the path to your source file. So that is, where did you keep your CMake lists? So 
if I do a listing of the directory below me, that's where I see CMake lists.txt. So now I'm going to tell CMake, look in the directory uh, above. I, sh I said below before, but I should have said above. Look in the directory above for CMake lists.txt. And so now it says, oh, there's all this stuff that's we're looking for. So we found your C++ compiler. We found your C compiler. Uh, the compiler that we're using is Apple's Clang. Um, and then finally, if you're worried about this warning, you can add a CMake minimum information required to the top of your CMake lists. But in the meantime, I've now built uh, my build files. So back in the olden days, you had to write your own make files. Now I actually have a make file that was generated for me here. And if I want to look inside of that, I can see that this make file has a lot of information that I didn't have to write. So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit here and show you that it correctly calls CMake. It knows which shell I'm using. It knows where the directories are that have all of my source. Uh, and finally, it knows the files that it needs to compile in order to build my output executable. So now all I have to type is make. And thank heavens, <laughs> I was able to generate uh, this target called hello CMake. So now, if I want to run it, I look inside of the source directory, and I should have an executable called hello CMake that prints out hello CMake. 